What's up, everybody? Welcome back to McTaco Podcast. We are in episode number six. Size. Size. What's up, Taco? What's up, Eric? How are you doing today? I'm doing great, minus the fact that it was like 50 mile an hour wind gusts out there today. Like, I, I put a poll out on my uh, Instagram last night, like screenshotted the uh, the weather forecast, and it oh, yeah. said, um, you know, t- 10 to 25 mile an hour wind with uh, 50 mile an hour gusts. And I'm like, should I go film at Opie tomorrow? Question mark. Yes. Or I said, do it or nah. And I think the majority of the people were like, yeah, do it. And I'm like, when I, okay, I considered it, yeah. But then I'm like, okay, I had a, uh, I had a ten o'clock meeting, I had an eleven uh, o'clock meeting, I had a twelve o'clock meeting, and a one o'clock meeting. By the time I was done with all those meetings, I was like, oof. all right, I'm just gonna chill. Yeah, I uh, when I saw that little Instagram feed that you did, I definitely clicked do it. Yes, I and, saw that, uh, <laughs> and I think. It said 100% do it at that point. Yep. So I might have been the first person to click on it, but dude, I was like, yes, he's, he's going. Go. He's ah, going to go. <laughs> I wanted to so bad, but I knew that you had things going on yep. and you wouldn't have been able to go out there with me. And and I actually considered it going out by myself and taking the tripod and just playing and seeing if I could shoot under 100. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, but that's I such thought, a big number. I thought, man, I'm not about to take this nice camera out there and, and put it up on, a, on one of those like pier tee pads and then no. turn around and watch it fly into the water because 50 mile an hour wind gust guys think about a 50 mile an hour wind gust it's that day in kansas when you're like uh, it's not usually that windy and then you like go outside and there's trash cans like rolling down the street and then and then go to opie and then you have uh, it's like times 10 out there yeah it's always windier out so, there so no- I, we'll, we'll make it happen at some point. It's not yes. like this is the only windy mm-hmm. day we're going to have in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> Highly doubtful. So we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely make a windy round one of these days. But mm-hmm. we've got a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of videos in my on my hard drive just waiting to go out. So I'm excited about that. Putting out pretty consistent content with the couples doubles has been so much fun. Yeah. Uh, with the ladies, you know, and and uh, putting some more twists on it. And actually, shout out to Disc Dice. I just purchased a a pair of disc dice and uh we're excited to go out and try that as well those i didn't realize like when eric first told me disc dice i was like oh yeah you know that's probably just some sort of six-sided die that has you know words written on it that is the case but these are like marble like they look insane yeah one's one's like this amber color and the other one's like this deep blue it's It's you can get lost staring at them it it honestly looks like granite yes like pieces of granite oh yeah they uh Disc dice, right? Disc dice. Yep. They did a great job with with whatever that product is because it looks great. Some sort of a, acrylic, maybe, but yeah, amazing. probably. Probably. I mean, it's not granite, obviously, but that would be pretty cool if it was. That would be savage. That would be super cool, but <laughs> but um, but yeah. So we've got a lot of that stuff going on. And one thing that I kind of want to touch on before we go any further is something that Taco and I have decided to do, and that is run a tournament. So if you guys yes. are close to us in, in in Emporia, or rather close to us at uh, Council Grove Lake, Kansas View Disc Golf Course, that's going to be the first stop of our dynamic doubles, and I'm excited about it. I, I know it's th- going to be great. Taco would come to me with this idea of running an event, a doubles event, and I was automatically like, "Yeah, we got to do it. Like, why not? What what else are we doing right now? Let's run a doubles event. Let's have some fun with this." Because uh, back in the day, there used to be so many doubles events, and now yes. you don't see it as much. And right. and um, one cool thing about this one is it's not going to be just one of those run of the mill. Just hey, let's go play best shot doubles. You know, right. you can't just find the best player in the country and go out there and win this tournament. No, well, maybe no. the best player in the country, but. It would be helpful. It wouldn't hurt, but no. The so kind of what we're looking at doing is a uh, a six 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 format for the first round is what it's called, and what that is is six holes of uh, best score. So you guys both play these first six. So like like for instance, one through six will be. I mean, it'll be a little different going forward, but if just imagine that this is the scenario. Holes one through six would be like a best uh, a best score. So you both play the holes in singles and just take the best score of um, of you two of your partners. Mm-hmm. Um, then the next six holes is going to be a uh, tough shot, probably. Right. So instead of worse shots, kind of like the video we did, right. only one person has to make the putt, which is going to be so much quicker as far as like playing yes. the the worst shot plus you know but anyways 
yeah, Tough Shot made it a little bit easier mm-hmm. to, to hole out, so to speak. Exactly, exactly right. And then the other six we decided was going to be was best it shot. just regular old best shot doubles. And then um, round two is going to be all alternate shot, like true alternate shot. You guys get to pick who tees off first on the very your first hole, and then it's just true alternate shot from there. So yep, back it's going to be fun, man. I'm I'm really excited about it. What's the date that we got planned for that? That's going to be February twenty eighth. February twenty eighth, like the last day of February, unless it's leap year. Uh, right. is when we're going to be out there at Cans of You. Look for more details coming soon on the Dynamic Discs page, on my page, on Tacos, Facebook, all of, you know, anything that you can get from us. And, and we'll obviously still be discussing on this podcast for the next few weeks about this event. And, you know, our plan is to not just run this one and be done, but our plan is to definitely uh, uh, continue running these doubles events at different courses. And, and one thing that we wanted to do is showcase some courses that I've designed. One hundred percent. Eric Eric's has like all these beautiful gems all over Kansas. Kansas View is definitely like one of my favorites. It's just such a sick little course that gives you a great mix of, you know, these nice rolling hills, open ish ish shots. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you start going into like this area where you have to carve out fairways and mm-hmm. and just gets really technical and there's some long ones on there. So it's just a great layout and um just showcasing a course like that i think is going to be really fun and um yeah just keep doing that for each time we go out and do one of these exactly exactly and cans of view is a hidden gem it really is and and uh last year was going to be the first year that we were going to showcase it during the the glass blown open and uh unfortunately it got canceled but we are moving forward and we will be playing at least some divisions will get to play it during the dynamic discs open yep come this april so i'm very excited about that and um if you guys don't know taco is is heavily involved in events at uh, at dynamic discs and behind the scenes on all the the uh, the ddo stuff that's coming up so he's got the in on everything going down at ddo and 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 speaking of which registration for mp40 opened this evening and i need to get on that yes if i'm gonna play i need to get on that so i will do that right after we're done here but uh I but yeah, I'm not done that. Already. I know I'm an idiot. Well, just when did it, it open at six? So an hour ago. But we'll look into it and see how uh, how uh, how full it is already. But whatever. Yeah, definitely. I know a guy. Squeeze him in. Well, there's always MPO. Kidding. Yeah, if, that, if, yeah. If that's the case, I'll sign. If if it's full, I'll take that as a sign and I'll play MPO. How about that? Well, we're gonna have to take a while on this podcast then. <laughs> yes, that's probably <laughs> accurate, and hopefully I don't get injured along the way. But, oh, definitely not. But uh, speaking of injuries. Hmm. You know, I kind of this topic was brought up on our on our on our thoughts on what we want to talk about at some point. And uh, what's like the most wicked injury you've seen, like on a disc golf course? Maybe it doesn't even have to be uh, involve a disc golf round or anything like that, like throwing a shot and someone's arm flew off or anything like that. But uh, what was the craziest injury you've seen? Um, I think I was at a course in Texas at a tournament, and there was this like warm up area. Or you could like throw, but there was like holes off to the right hand side of like that throwing area. You know, I'm, I'm sure people can get an idea. It's like this big open field, and you got like woods on the right, woods on the left, and mm-hmm. you could just throw out there. Anyways, I was standing behind this warm up area because I was about to throw, and this guy rips this drive. And as he rips this drive, somebody comes out <gasps> of that tree line, oh, no. and it cleans this dude's clock so hard. It hits him like right below the temple, like squares oh, his eye, man. and it like. Head whips back, goes down. Oh, that hurts just thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, we run over there. <clears throat> I grab my, my towel out of my bag. Just bleeding. Just, yeah, I'm just assuming. putting pressure on his head. I mean, he was cool, other than the fact that a head injury like that, you're going to bleed. Yeah, so, especially when adrenaline, if any, if any adrenaline going, yeah. you know, it's just going to start <laughs> bleeding out. <laughs> it was it was crazy, too. The dude was like, my ba- it was my bad. Uh, yeah. I threw on that field earlier today like because he was practicing on like one of the hills. Yeah. Or holes that were like uh, within the woods area right there, but that was probably the most intense one that I have personally seen. Like that's in, that, yeah, right that's next to me. that that's one thing about disc golf and you know driving ranges or practice areas. It's super scary, and you got to have your head on a swivel while you're out there. Make sure that you're aware of everything going on because it's not like golf where you go to the the uh, the range and get a bucket of balls and you hit them and then you move on with your day. 
Nope. You're chucking your discs out there and then going to pick them up. So you yeah. just make sure you guys are being safe when you're out there doing that kind of things. Because I've seen a lot of close calls on uh, on the practice fields and all that. But oh, um, definitely. But I would say I've got a couple that I wanted to talk okay. about. That of course I've seen a lot, but I want I've got a couple that came to mind when I read this little topic. Um, uh, one of them was in Texas. Go figure. Oh. That's the same place you were just talking about. Uh, San Saba, Texas, which is. Uh, where John Houck used to have, I think it was four courses. It was back in the day when we used to play um, doubles. There's national doubles, world doubles, oh. and all those events were going on. But this was the amateur weekend, and um, these two dudes were, were partners, and they were going through, like, San Saba's in the middle of absolute nowhere, too, first off. Right. Like, nowhere. And um, you know you know Texas, that, like, Texas Hill Country area, they mm -hmm. kind of have that scrubby... Yeah, that, underbrush, thorns, yeah, and crazy, all that crap. Yeah, that stuff's You know, stuff's nasty. Brutal. Mm -hmm. It's brutal. Well, one guy was walking through, and you know those big old, like, locust thorns? Oh, my gosh. I yeah, don't even it's like not where going, this is this going. Is, this isn't going anywhere good, guys. So if you're anything. if you're very squeamish, just turn the volume down. Don't change the channel. Just turn the volume down. But, but uh, so it caught on his bag as he's walking through this little, like, tunnel area. And as it went, it snapped back. And it was kind of an uphill. Well, his partner was right about head height. Oh my gosh! Right into his Wait. eyeball. Oh, <gasps> shut up, dude! Eyeball, like right into his eyeball. And this thing was sticking out. And I remember um, telling that they were telling him, "Cover your good eye," like until the the I don't remember if like they got airlifted out of there or ambulance came or what, but cover your good eye because if you cover your bad eye. Your other eye is still wandering when it sees things. Does that make sense? So, like, if you see something over here move, you, you look with your eye, and both eyes move. Well, if you cover your good eye and you just can't see anything, you're not. Oh, yeah, I get it. You don't yeah. want to move that. You don't um, want that pupil to move, so it like. Oh, it's oh, not, dude. It was. Ugh, just thinking about it makes my brain hurt because yeah, that was a that was a pretty bad, and that's not really disc golf related. That was kind of like hiking related almost because. The guy well, was just going hike. through the trees, you know, but that's insane. Yeah, that's it's, disgusting. It is pretty disgusting. And I apologize. I was, I was going to like follow up after you told, <laughs> told one of them was like, my sister rolled her ankle. Oh, and it was like, she did a double pop, but dude, it's like, how do I follow anything with an eyeball? Eyeball injury. Sure. Eyeball injury. Well, I'm going to follow it up with at my amateur world in 1999 in Kansas city, I was playing on a card at uh, Prairie center with a guy and it was one of those back holes that, that aren't there anymore. Well, the, their holes are still there, but they kind of have redesigned the course since then. But it was this hole that played from like this little cliff and it, and it shot out towards a baseball field. Well, I remember the guy, one of the guys on my card ripped a shot and it turned it over and it just went over the baseball field. And, and, you know, back then it wasn't a big deal. You just jump the fence and grab your disc and move on. Right. Boom. Well, yeah. they had those like little plastic, like they're yellow oh, typically, yeah. like they have a pan. They yeah. have those at Peter Pan, uh, over like the top of the fence to, for protection. And yeah. what those are for Snatching is home runs. if, yeah, if somebody wants to go up and rob a home run, they're not going to get impaled on the fence. Well, Love those things. Well, this guy, and it was wet. I forgot to mention that. It was a little rainy, so oh, gosh. one of those. So the guy jumped up and put his arm on the fence, <gasps> and it just slipped right off, and he fell straight to the ground and broke his arm. Oof. Straight to the ground, broke his arm. It was his non-throwing arm, I believe. Yes, it was definitely his non-throwing arm that he broke. And we had four or five holes left, and he finished the round with a broken arm. Now it wasn't like beast. A, it wasn't like a compound fracture or anything where the bone was sticking out, but it was a it was a fracture. I mean, it was broken. I mean, yeah, broken arm. Some crack, cr and fractures or cracks. That, yeah. Right after yeah, that round, he went to the hospital and. I saw him the next day and asked him how he was, and his hand was all up, his old arm was in a cast, so he had to pull out of the tournament. And, and what does it look but, like? But uh, it was crazy, man. That's, <laughs> oh my that's, gosh, that's uh, that's nuts. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm yeah. still honestly, I'm still kind of thinking, still about, thinking the about the eyeball. Thinking about the eyeball. Yeah. Can't not think about that. I'm gonna dream about that tonight. I know, dude. I'm sorry. I'm I'm usually I'm usually the squeamish one too when it comes to injuries and that kind of stuff. So well, I'll, I'll, let me I wanted uh, to ruin your day. <laughs> So let me tell the tell you the story about my sister because I'm going to embarrass yeah. her a little bit. Perfect. So I know she, she's a big listener of the show. So yeah, she definitely likes to listen. So she uh, we're playing uh, our local course at the time it was Rockland Disc Golf Course, mm -hmm. and they have 
Um, it's actually hole eight by the basket of hole eight. There's like all these little like squirrel ground squirrel holes okay. everywhere. You know yep. what I'm talking about? Yep. Everybody's been to a course where there's like boom, little little pockets of earth missing. Yep. Right. So she throws this amazing tee shot and puts herself probably I don't know 25 or something like that. And she goes up to throw this putt while her disc was like covering, I guess, the hole that was like right. And she, when she like, like gopher holes, yeah, yeah, she went forward on her putt and, or like just to go through the motion and like rolled her ankle and boom, boom, pop, pop, popped both ways. She goes down. We have to carry her basically about 150 feet to the next tee, pa- tee box uh, while her husband's running. My brother in law, Jay, oh my goodness. while he's running to the truck. Oh. And I'm sitting there. And she's like, dude, I think I'm gonna throw up. I was like, do oh, it. No. She yaks right there, like right off, right off the the, the bench by whole nine because of the injury. Because, because of the, the, was it broken? She's or one of was those it just chicks. Like roll, like like sprain. She, um, I think it was like a severe sprain because it okay. went both ways or mm-hmm. or whatever. She had it casted up. It wasn't broken, but um, either way, Still. like she, when she goes through pain, like um, first first thing she does is usually she pukes, <laughs> and then like she passes out. Okay. So she was like on the verge of like passing out after she puked. She's like going through this motion, like, oh my gosh. I was like, this is about to happen. I know it. When we were like, when we were kids, she stabbed herself in the hand um, when we were carving pumpkins, doing the knife all the way through. Boom. Stabs her hand, makes a gash. She looks at it, runs to the bathroom, pukes, passes out, like all of it. That's I was crazy. like, this is happening again. That's, so. That seems that's like something I would do. Yeah, sure. but having a carrier for that far, not that she's heavy, but it's just like yeah. when a human's kind of like at that dead weight, it's like hard to carry that that type of person. She yeah. was definitely yeah. okay. So, <laughs> so distracted. I, I know squirrel. we don't want to turn this into an injury podcast Never. or anything like that, but I got one more, and this one is 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 close to my heart. Like this one is is pretty serious stuff here. So. This was probably, I'm going to guess, 10, no, more than that, probably 12, 12 to 15 years ago hmm. that this happened. And we were playing Jones East. We were on hole number one, but back then that would have been hole number 12 or 13 or something like that. And... um Huh. We, we, we were out there with a big group of guys, and we we had parked up on top of the hill. If you guys are familiar with Jones Park, we were on what is current hole number one, and we, we usually parked up by the flagpole up on hole seven because that hole eight used to be hole number one on Jones Jones uh, Jones East. Huh. And uh, so we would parked up there. We're playing league, and um, Ralphie was with us. And I remember seeing something out of the corner of my eye just dart across the road, and it was a squirrel. Ralph saw it. Oh, no. Ralph wanted to catch it. No. Ralph tried to catch it. He ran over the little hill there and no. onto Lincoln Street, and all I heard was screeching of brakes and a thud. Oh, my god! And then I'm like, oh, my God. No, this did oh not just gosh. happen. And first off, whoever was driving that car is a jerk store. Oh, they dipped? They dipped. They nice. dipped hard. They just left. And I looked up, and Ralph was sprinting over the hill at me, slid at my feet, and looked up at me with both of his paws in the air. He's like, dude, we need to go home. Goes, I am busted. He goes, man, I am. I just hurt myself badly. So I, I petted him, made sure he was all right, and he stood up, and he was just like, nope, can't do Ooh, it. Gosh. My leg, I'm done. I scooped him up, and Ralph's a big dog. He's like a yeah. 40-pound dog, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I, I carried him from – from hole one to hole seven's basket yeah. and uh, threw him in the truck. We headed straight to the vet and uh, they took him in and they looked at it and they said, oh, I think it's just a sprain. I don't think it's that big of a deal. They put a splint on it. Oh, nice. Um, a couple days later, he was on the couch, jumped off the couch, broke the splint, uh, had to take him in again. And they said, all right, let's just x-ray it. And they go, he is a tough dog. He has a broken leg. And I'm like, What? broken what leg like okay let's let's fix this let's get him taken care of did you guys miss that on the first (laughs) x-ray right well they didn't x-ray him the first time they just kind of looked over him because they didn't think it needed done because he was standing on it kind of but you know like like whatever but but regardless he ended up 
putting a cast on it. He had a hard cast on it, and I've right. got I've got some pictures of him from back then, and he just looks like he's super mad. A little sock just, everywhere, and a little lampshade that he had to wear. <laughs> oh god! You know, but uh, poor guy. Yeah, that that reminded me when you said uh, yeah. you know the ankle sprain and all that. I just yeah. remember him sliding at my feet, and I'm like heart in my throat just Bapped feeling car, awful about it runs and, back but guess what he's still kicking he's still upstairs chilling on the couch probably yeah. sleeping he was super excited when i showed up yeah he's still got a lot of energy that guy so yeah it's probably my girls but let's let's move on from energy in, injuries go. because let's i'm go. not liking that part, yes go but, yeah um, if we you guys haven't it. noticed at least you the the people that are watching not the people on the audio podcast because they're not going to have a clue but uh, everybody watching on YouTube, we were in a new corner of the basement. We have moved. We moved. I decided, you know, we did a one episode, two, three, and then let's move. Let's move for for a number six over here to to we call Denise's corner. So yeah, if I you guys can why. see, I don't know if you could see the the frisbees behind us, but majority of them are purple or gray, and that's what her bag consists of is mainly gold mm-hmm. line, purple frisbees well, when and, she gets that teal color there's some teal mm-hmm. ones back there when she get, finds those yeah, those, believe me. those teal ones on the wall behind us are, are pretty slick yeah and the hand eye poster gems. back there is pretty cool too it's one of my favorites for that sure. is definitely like the bomb right there i don't yeah. know if you guys can see it but <laughs> yeah this is cool so this is denise's corner and speaking of denise uh she was the trivia answer mm-hmm. to our giveaway from last week and we had a handful of people that knew that probably more than a handful but majority of the people that were answering knew that that answer was Denise Cameron was the first player to throw the shot at the very first inaugural disc golf pro tour event in Maple Hill hole number 1 and we have selected Rob Trotter as our winner of this beautiful Pink Lucid X dun, 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 dun. trespass. Congratulations, so, Rob. Rob, hit me up on Facebook or Instagram Messenger, and I will get this shipped out to you ASAP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it's pretty pretty awesome, man. I've, the disc is so good. It is good. Like, yeah, yeah. I've got like two of them, in, two or three in my bag now. I'm thinking about running a having having a run of them done. We'll see. But, I want um, five of them. But speaking of giveaways. Uh, we're going to skip a giveaway this week right. on the show. However, I want to talk about a big giveaway that we're talking about doing. Uh, it's kind of like a a, kin, a, kin, a 10K sub countdown giveaway is what we're going to call it, I guess. Um, as soon as we hit 10K subscribers on the YouTube page, we're going to give away all kinds of crazy stuff. I've got 10 X Emacs that I want to give away, and I'm going to give them away to 10 different people. So not just like one person is going to win this. I want to share the love and um and all that good stuff and we're we're getting there i think we're at like uh what 60 something 6500 i think is what you're i think it's something like yeah. that yeah i can i can actually look real quick 6.53k right 6.53k is that what your guess is let's see here got it 6.53k yeah nailed it so and you know i think we've I had i looked like an hour ago <laughs> i think we've had like a thousand or so here just in the last like couple weeks just because of the Emac Judge video and all the content yes. going out. So yes. 6538 is the exact number that we have right now. And as um, soon as we hit that 10K, we're going to do a big giveaway. And we'll probably do some more giveaways on the on the, uh, the, the podcast throughout um, between now and then. You know, we're not just going to Yeah, there's definitely off, some but, good stuff uh, yeah. coming in. We're just waiting on a few packages to arrive, potentially. Yes, yes. some really cool so. stuff coming. And... Uh, 10k giveaway so make sure you guys like and subscribe that really does help comment down below share my page out to people and um, we're gonna be doing a little bit more of a a a campaign on it at some point and do maybe some facebook and instagram giveaways where you share stories or share posts that kind of stuff to uh to really get this uh this channel moving yeah we want to see um just a bunch more people out there enjoying this content. So yeah. give us some give us some heads up of what you want to see. We know that the the couples doubles have been great. Yeah. We we really enjoy doing that too because both of the ladies love playing disc golf. So mm-hmm. um, and most of the time they 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 carry their own weight. I mean they definitely like. I feel I feel like the third wheel a lot of the man. times. If that makes sense. <laughs> You'd be the fourth wheel, I think. But, <laughs> yeah, but hmm, so how as the saying goes, either way, fourth wheel. Either way, either way. Should yeah, it's been great. Comment down below though on what yes. type of video content you guys want to see because I'm 
I'm all ears and I love putting this content out and doing some of this uh, fun video stuff that you guys want to see and I definitely want to want to make that happen so yep 10k giveaway we're gonna have a whole bunch of fun stuff not just the the x emacs but we're hoping to get a couple other um, maybe bigger items to give away Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah we'll, we'll make this thing big I'll see if maybe Maybe dynamic can throw in a couple pretty cool items as well. Yes. I think. I think. I think if we just say they're going to do it, they're going to do it. Yeah, probably. They'll so. be happy. Yeah, of course I think they'll be happy. Why not? Yeah, I think so. I think so. So yeah, you know, we'll, we'll make that happen. It's always ever changing. Yeah, exactly. We're always working on something. <laughs> that's true. That's, <laughs> that's a direct quote. That's a direct quote. quote so, uh, also, I want to say shout out to Birdie Fuel once again for hooking us up as we're enjoying our Birdie Fuel as we speak. Um, it's wonderful. Got some really cool things in the works coming with our yep. new logo and mm-hmm. um, maybe some new coffee and some giveaway type coffee and all that good stuff. So that's Birdie Fuel's been great. It's been fun working with those guys. And, uh, you know, shout out to Keith and everybody over there because we really enjoy it. And you guys are, are definitely, you know, helping out by, by sponsoring some of these pros, giving them that's their right. own br- uh, blend of coffee and mm-hmm. – and uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. So if you guys haven't checked out Birdie Fuel and you are a coffee drinker, do it. Trust me. Just just go on their website and place an order because it is so worth it. It's super good. I like just checking out the swag that they have. Like they just came out with these cups that are they're like glass. Mm-hmm. The little tumblers. The glass mm-hmm. tumblers that looks like oh my gosh, those are so. They just you know I think their their logo super clean. Yep. And they can just you know it's just you know what it is right when you see it like i love it i I think it's it's great i love the the brand of coffee i love everything about it man they're they're great they're doing great things i'm excited for growth there for sure oh yeah and and there's so much room to grow there too so it's it's uh it's very exciting stuff there so shout out to birdie fuel once again thank you guys so much for everything you guys do for Mm -hmm. us and other pros as well so so that kind of thing speaking of other pros Mm. what's like um one of the the worst shots you've ever seen from a pro let's let's uh let's put that out there let's see what's the worst shot you've ever seen from a pro do you mind if you go first on this one i can i feel like i haven't yeah go ahead let Um, me let me jar that memory to see are are we are okay so on this question i guess aside from me because i've seen myself throw plenty i mean and i'm talking plenty of bad shots right um uh, too many to name right now but you know, I've thrown some bad shots in my day, but one that comes to mind mm-hmm. is is I'm not trying to call this guy out by any means, <laughs> but Paul Uleberry, you definitely mean. monkey pawed. He he phrased the word monkey, monkey paw. the term monkey paw, and uh, he was throwing an upshot, throwing an approach at a, at a, a basket. It wasn't that far of an approach at all. I think it was a putter that he was probably throwing. I don't know if it was wet or what it was, but if you guys know what the monkey paw is, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. But if he's throwing like directly towards where the camera is, straight in front of us, he let it go over there. And oh it, my god! And gosh. it went that way, and it was a ninety degree or ninety degree or, and it was it was not good. Monkey and you can paw. ask him about it. Just just ask Paul about it if next time you see him post something. So what's up with this monkey paw? What? Okay, so what was his reaction? I feel like he looked at his hand. He looked. He threw it and looked directly at his hand. Like, <laughs> he just, what? You just disbelief. You just failed me, bro. Like, what's going on here? Disbelief. But, yeah, we've all done it. We've all shanked. We've all um, grip locked. I mean, this was like definitely a grip lock. But uh, but yeah, we've we've all been there. <laughs> we've all been there. And this one was uh was w- one of my most memorable ones that I can remember seeing. Yeah, that's. I mean. 90 degree from 90 a pro. 90 degree. Man, you just, it's just like some things that just don't... <sighs> Denise don't had a, Denise had a 90 degree as well that she was... Um, she was out videoing herself one day just for like uh like it, I strongly suggest people go out and record their 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 form yeah. just off the tee that way you can really work on it and and pinpoint what's going wrong if anything's going mm-hmm. wrong kind of thing yeah. Boom, and and yeah. she's a firm believer in that she she asks me to film her all the time just so she can take it home and, and break it down and look at it and see if she's hopping weird or whatever the case may be and she had a a side shot of her on her phone just like you know the length of the t pad so you can see it and you couldn't see where the disc was going she was just doing it strictly for form and she definitely pulled it behind her and threw it straight mm-hmm. we were on hole 17 at jones east and she threw it into the woods oh. 
like directly over my whole what is it 16's basket so i mean she she shanked it and i wouldn't be talking about it if she didn't share it on her own page at one point thank goodness yeah it's yeah i you know honestly man i i can't even pinpoint a time when i've that i can remember a um you know a touring pro playing again i haven't seen that much i've i've walked with a lot of people on a lot of rounds Mm -hmm. yes you have and what about just the worst shot you've seen it doesn't have to be from a pro i don't even know like man i have seen some like you know throw it a foot in front of you but that's been i feel like a dime a dozen on that you know and you hit a tree boom or it rolls behind you i've had some pretty epic horrible shots in my time yeah um yeah i don't know blank I okay. Blank. How about how about this? I'm blanking. I love I love my boy AJ Rizzi. He's like one of my favorite people yeah. in the universe. AJ's a great guy. I love think, AJ. Um, he had uh, a struggle on hole ten at um, Ledgestone, Ledgestone, I believe, the year he was on the the lead mm-hmm. card. He was leading at one point, and I felt like that was it. Wasn't just like one bad shot it was just that bad hole which is hole 10 is that hole the, 10. the crazy it's dog like, leg no it's you got to throw it through the the gap of the bridge oh, okay and the then bridge it's like hole. an island is it the bridge hole the bridge hole okay yeah yeah that's, so that's more familiar for me the bridge hole yeah so i've i've been a part of that and that was kind of like one of those times when you're like man i feel every little bit of this scenario for this hole that's a tough but hole too and it's a and it's a re- extremely difficult hole to change uh uh for the distance to judge the distance um, because there is like a valley that you walk down mm-hmm. to get to that basket. So, and there's always wind coming at your face always on wind. that hole. That always kind of windy. Thing, so yeah, it was just like a tough, tough hole. And I kind of saw that happen, but those weren't all bad shots. So that wasn't even like a worse shot. That was just like, yeah, that's just like bad luck the more than a luck. worse shot. You know what I mean? Like, like mine with Paul was just a, <laughs> just an awful shot. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> holy, it happens. It happens to the best of us, but, um, so, yeah, I yeah. guess that maybe I've just been fortunate to not like memorize that. Yeah, just but, delete that from your memory banks. Yeah, I, like I focus shots, a lot on all like, my bad shots, and I'm just like, uh, but I also try to forget. Yeah, data dump. That's a that's a good way to put it. Data yeah, dump. It's a good data dump. So it's, it's well, okay, give me another dump. one of yours then, since I'm slacking oh, here. I gave you two. I'm going to move on to the next one. Fair enough. I, I'm not. I can't think of any others <laughs> off the top of my head, or I don't want to call anybody out. But <laughs> um, fair. But uh, no. Um, Okay, then how about this? How about when did you know it was time to move up from oh. uh, to the next division? Okay. Kind of, you know, when you start out playing tournaments, you play in intermediate or uh, whatever division you start in. How did you know? It was like, man, I should probably move up. Yeah, I played my first event in Novice, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to move up. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. most people that have been playing it as long as I had, and then, you know, I was like in the game for 10 years, and then I played Novice, and I was like, time to go. So time intermediate. To go yep. I think I played like three or four events in intermediate, and then I was like, my scores are really close to what the advanced guys are, so I might as well just go up there. So that was quick, boom. For me, it was like each time I felt like my scores would put me in the middle of the pack on the other side. Right. I felt like I could at least be in a competitive atmosphere. And then at the point where I was doing that for advance, which is the same, like just probably a few for tournaments and went up to open. And then I was like, well, I'm down to just get my butt kicked by the best players in the area. Cause right, I might get right. lucky and card up with the guy that just does things and has like a certain, you know, way that he plays and how he attacks the course. That's all stuff that I like. And you don't really get that as much with the advanced field. Sometimes you do. If you're lucky, sure. you get like a gem. But usually you have to play like really, really good to get to to like the top card, which is where I'd yep. say. So yeah, I would agree yeah. with that. And, and you kind of you kind of touched on it or were alluding to it. Um, depends on what you want right. out of your game. If yep. you want to get better, then then move up and play with people that are that are obviously better than you. Because yes. that's what's going to make you a better player is yep. constantly playing with people. Even if they're not teaching you anything, just watching you, definitely learning things. So yep. if your goal is to move up and uh, or, or to get better at disc golf, then definitely move up divisions whenever you can. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. I'm not saying go from like if you're a, a bottom-level advanced player and there's a, a national tour coming to town that you should just go ahead and start playing pro the whole time. You know, I think that's a great experience, <laughs> but maybe go out and just watch that event, yeah. spectate at that event if you can. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me, I think it's it's also as soon as you start 
start competing more and more and you're playing more and more tournaments and all of a sudden second place third place fourth place fifth place even is is not satisfying ah. like you're super just disappointed that right. you that you are in that position or mm. you didn't perform the way you did or you go out and and have a tournament and and uh, maybe you didn't play very well. You right. didn't play up to your standards, but you still got like top two, there top it is, three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's time to move up. Yeah, that's 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 a tall tale for sure. That's when you know, hey, I should probably go ahead and move up divisions right now. Yeah, totally. And uh, I think there's a lot to think about too. Like for for people that are always like on that bubble, like should I move up? Should I stay where I'm at? Like, yeah, what event are you going to play? Like, what where are you playing at? Um, I think. DDO is a great example coming sure. up. Like you have all these. I've had a lot of people ask me for sure. I've had out. quite a few questions, uh, about, about, you know, should I move up? I'm like, well, you know, I, I've been telling people this, like, how do you want to experience the event? There's a couple different ways you can think about it. You could take the time when you come to the event and just play to win the globe. Yeah. Right. And if, and if that, I feel like if that's your goal, like just do what you have to do to, to win that, that's probably going to mean practice those courses yep, and just those courses and just focus on those courses the entire time. And then of course there's always, you know, you come out here and you want to play a bunch of the different C tiers to experience those, those courses and playing disc golf. Like that's a different mindset. You could still win those for sure. Oh yeah. And then at that point, like division doesn't really matter, but you know, if you're if you're gonna come out here and play a bunch of different rounds and not focus 100% of your energy towards one thing, then just know that you might struggle a little bit on um, on other areas of your game. So, yep. like, if you're intermediate, thinking about playing advanced, or if you're uh, an advanced, then you still, or you play in advanced and you still can, I guess, what is the uh, cutoff like 9:30 something, something but, like that. Yeah. But yeah, and you can play intermediate. Then you know, pick and choose. It's your choice. Your it's your journey. You know. Just have fun doing it. Just don't don't let yourself get mad about something that you chose to do. You know what I mean? That's, so I that's, think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, very true. Very true. And, it, and like you said, it's all, all dependent on what you want out of your game. Right. You know, if you're just in it to have a good time, then just have a good time. But if mm -hmm. you're in it to, like, get better and compete, move up. That's right. That's kind of how I look at it. So Agreed. Well, guys, that's been about 30 minutes, mm -hmm. give or take. And uh, that's kind of where we want to keep these episodes to. Do um, you have anything else to kind of talk on or points that you want to bring up before we kind of move on uh yeah start sharing um the videos start giving them likes if you haven't subscribed already please get down there and subscribe share to other people let's get some subscribers going so we can give away some sickness oh, up in this man cave we're definitely giving away some cool stuff coming up soon and, and I, I, plan to, I plan to work on that over the next week and and maybe next episode episode seven we'll have uh, a little maybe a uh, little teaser on what we're looking at giving away the kind of thing. So, hmm. yeah, Jeez. yeah, a little, little a little teaser. So, well, for Taco, I'm Eric McCabe, and we are in Denise's corner this week. Who knows where we'll be next week? Maybe, maybe next week will be, it'll be nice weather, and we'll, we need to do this episode from the boat sometime. Oh my gosh, that'd be so sick. Wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do it. We're going to make that happen. <gasps> yeah. We're going to do an episode from the boat one day. So I do all my in the bags from the boat. So I might as well do a, a podcast from the boat too. Another great spot to drink coffee at. Oh, so, so good. So Seems super relaxing. So good. So thanks guys so much for watching and listening, whatever you're doing, you know, go out there, like, subscribe, share all that fun stuff. And uh, yeah, we will see you next time.